This painting is exactly three years old. <laughs> it was when I was first getting into gouache or really studying it more seriously. And the first time I tried acrylic gouache, if you've been watching any of my older videos, you may have seen it already. I have a process video for how I painted it. So for today's studio session, I am going to be focusing on using my new acrylic gouache. Watching yourself in a video from years ago is so cringy. <laughs> but after that painting three years ago, I basically gave up on acrylic gouache. <laughs> and today I thought it was time to revisit it. So we're gonna be comparing acrylic gouache with traditional gouache. I'm gonna be doing an underpainting with acrylic gouache and painting on top with traditional artist gouache, just like I did in the original video. And I will be painting the same scene as I did last time. Along the way, I'll share my thoughts about the process, how acrylic gouache compares to a traditional gouache and how it feels to paint with it. All right, let's jump in. First, let's talk about what acrylic gouache is and how it's different from traditional artist gouache. Acrylic gouache is made with an acrylic binder. Once it's dry, it's a permanent layer, just like acrylic. Whereas traditional gouache is made with a gum arabic binder, and that's more similar to watercolor. You can reactivate traditional gouache after it dries. And by the way, this is the Holbein acrylic gouache. And performance-wise, it behaved really similarly to regular gouache. It was just a tiny bit thicker, and while it was wet, it felt a little bit more goopy. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. But in the end, it dries completely matte, and it has super, super strong color. I didn't dilute it at all while I was painting, just enough to get my brush wet enough to help the paint flow. So you might be wondering why you would choose acrylic gouache and not just acrylic, because nowadays there are even matte acrylics. And to be honest, I'm not sure. I don't have any experience with the acrylic that has a matte finish, but one of the things that makes gouache special in general is the extremely high pigment load. So there's a much higher pigment to binder ratio, and that's one reason it's so incredibly vibrant especially when it dries matte and you don't have to worry about reflections distracting you from the color. This painting you're looking at was completed exactly three years ago. This was my first attempt at using acrylic gouache as an underpainting to regular gouache, traditional gouache. The more gouache videos I've shared lately, the more questions I get about acrylic gouache and combining it with regular gouache. And it just, every time I get a question like that, I, I have to respond. Like, I really don't know much about acrylic gouache and I wish I did. I wish I could explain things, but you know, without the practice, without the experience, there's no point in me answering those comments. So let's change that. I did talk a little bit while I was recording, but it was very broken sentences <laughs> because I kept getting distracted by painting. So I figured I might as well do a voiceover and share my thoughts now that I've had a bit of time to distill everything. One of the biggest things I noticed while painting with the acrylic gouache is that it was very hard to get large areas because the second I touched the paint to the paper, any moisture that was present would just soak in. And I think this is kind of similar to regular gouache. It's a very dry medium in general, but with regular gouache, I tend to dilute my first couple layers or just add water whenever I feel like it. And in this case, and with the acrylic gouache, I was trying to keep it just pure gouache. I was really only getting my brush wet to help the paint flow a little bit. I started diluting it just a little bit in the foreground to help the paint flow better. I didn't want a lot of white paper showing through, I just wanted bold color because I knew I would be coming back with regular gouache on top of it and I wanted something, some, something of substance underneath. But already at this point in the painting, I noticed that there wasn't a huge difference in consistency once I was painting with it. It felt a little bit goopier straight out of the tube, but once you start getting it flowing and mixing with other colors, it, f it felt 
pretty similar to regular gouache. All right, I finished the first layer. We're gonna let this completely dry and, now, and then we'll come back with some traditional gouache on top. I don't know if you have to do this before you close it, but I like to give my acrylic gouache tubes a good uh, clean before I put the caps back on. Otherwise, I get scared that they're gonna like permanently harden because it is permanent paint, it's acrylic. After a much needed cuddle session with my baby, it was time for the top layer. Okay, now I'm switching to regular traditional artist gouache and we'll do the second layer or the final layer, I guess. I'm gonna use a limited palette as usual. That's my preferred way of painting. And this is my Red Grass Stay Wet palette, the version two, the new version. Been loving it so far. I have to admit that being able to paint my clouds without worrying that the under color, that blue, was going to start blending into my upper, my top layers, was a dream. It's something I love about acrylic in general, just being able to layer endlessly without worrying about what's below. But at the same time, I kind of rely on the ability to blend into my under layer quite a bit. And I didn't even notice or realize that until I did this painting. While I dust this bluish purplish color over the mountains, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to blend into my under color, that reddish color, and I'm going to get some nice, good neutral tones. But then I had to remind myself, nope, that first layer is not going anywhere. And I had to mix more carefully for my top layer. I had to go back and make a lot more color changes throughout the painting because I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to the under layer just sitting there. I guess this is just a thing you have to get used to. It's a, it's a whole new strategy of painting. And I think I could enjoy it with a lot more practice that is. There are no layering issues. The traditional gouache adheres to the regular gouache just fine. So I think this might be a really good workflow for someone who is a bit concerned or has trouble with blending into their layer below. I think one of the big struggles with gouache is the fact that when you layer things, you have to consider what's gonna happen when it blends into the color below. For me, that's part of my strategy, but for some people, it's probably one of the biggest annoying things about gouache. Maybe you want to give this a try. Have a permanent underlayer that still dries matte and looks just like gouache, but with the benefit of not really worrying about creating any kind of muddy colors. Just some quick tips if you are planning on trying this. Since this is technically acrylic, it's going to dry permanently, so you don't want to use this in your normal palette. When I did the acrylic gouache layer, I used a piece of palette paper so that I wouldn't have to worry about accidentally getting it into my normal gouache or my normal palette. I also use different brushes for the acrylic gouache layer, mainly because I'm a bit forgetful and I didn't want to ruin my nice brushes. I would love to hear from anybody who regularly uses acrylic gouache. Maybe give some tips in the comments for someone else who might be brand new to it, or for me, because I think I may try this once in a while. Although it will take a lot of getting used to because I do rely so much on blending all my layers together, I think it was really fun and it was a bit freeing. So who knows what the future of my gouache practice will look like. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more gouache goodness in the future. Thanks for watching. Take care.